Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. This is the Hamley TAC R122 semi-automatic rimfire rifle. Well, you've seen the rifling used for the selection of ammunition. Now, you've probably seen most of the time I run it with a sound moderator and also with a rifle scope on top. But that's the flash hider you can see there. Obviously, the sound moderator reduces some of the volume, especially when you're using subsonic ammunition. Now, two other things to really look at on this rifle are the iron sights. Now, they are actually polymer iron sights, so to speak. But you've got a two millimeter post at the front and then the rear, the aperture, there's a two aperture sight and you can flip the front aperture down so you can swap between a five and a quarter millimeter aperture and a 1.65 millimeter aperture, which of course gives you better depth of field when you're focusing that foresight and getting a little bit more, little bit more accuracy on target. Now the foresight is elevation adjustable in four positions and the rear sight, you've got a little detented click adjuster on the side so you can do your windage adjustment on that. The barrel is 16 inches long which is 410 millimeters and the fore end is aluminium and there's lots of M lock and cooling area on it. It's stiff and you've also got QD sling mounting points on either side. There are also QD sling mounting points on the rear stock and the rear stock has got the latch there so it's length of pull adjustable. While we've got it fully extended let's measure length of pull. So, length of pull at maximum is just under 15 and a half inches, which is 390 millimetres. That's long and it means you've got a rifle that's going to fit pretty much the biggest shooters as well. You've got additional sling mounting points here and you can also put slot through straps on it. If we just put the latch down now to the shortest length and measure again, that is 12 inches or 305 millimetres. And of course, that derives from military uses where you might have body armour and things like that which is making up your length of pull. But of course on a fun or sporting rifle you've got full adjustability on length of pull to give you the absolute optimum position whether you're using iron sight or a rifle scope. There's loads of Picatinny rail on the metal action and of course I actually use reach forward mounts on my scope to give me slightly longer length of pull because that allows me to keep that on the front of the action and of course it keeps the scope well away so I've got that 100mm barrel leaf from the scope. You will of course need to remove the rear sight if you are putting a rifle scope on but both these sights have a little push button there to lock them in position. If I just leave that popped up we can see some more of the details of the rifle. The trigger is single stage unit and adjustable from 3500 to 4500 grams. Overall length of the rifle is 830 to 910 millimetres, which is 32.7 to 35.8 inches, depending on which length of pull you've got selected. Overall weight is 2.5 kilograms, which is 6.5 pounds. The grip is familiar, it's AR15 compatible, and it's got stippling on it for more actual tactile perception. Reach to trigger is not bad, and the trigger is adjustable from 3.5 to 4.5 kilos. The magazine release catch is on the side there for your index finger to pop it in and out. We'll look at that more in a second. On the left side, there's actually a dummy bolt catch that doesn't actually operate. The actual magazine follower itself works as the bolt stop. So if you have the magazine out, there is nothing that will stop that bolt reciprocating at all when you pull the T-handle on the back. Once the magazine is in, that will then latch the bolt. Now that's an unusual thing, but it doesn't actually affect operation at all. You just need to remember that you need the magazine to keep the bolt open. But once the magazine has kept that bolt open, if you remove the magazine, it will stay open because that's operating the internal mechanism inside. 
looking at the magazine, the instructions say it's a 20 round magazine, but this is actually a 10 round magazine that's been supplied. But you just click the rounds in the top and you've got a little pair of buttons at either side there so you can ease pressure on the follower just to speed up loading slightly if necessary. Spares are available and that just goes in the rifle, good firm press, wrap the bolt and off you go. And of course if there's a round in it, that bolt won't lock and off you go shooting. Once you've finished, pop the magazine out, swap it over and on the side, if you want to use it, there is also a dust cover and that will flick open as soon as the bolt operates. The forward assist lever is a dummy, it does move slightly but of course you're not going to use it on a 2-2 rimfire in general terms. The magazine is actually listed as a 20 round magazine on the website but this one supplied is a 10 round magazine. Stripping the action for cleaning involves pushing the rear action pin out here. That will then pull out from the other side. It's sometimes a little bit easier with this small tool. And then of course you can leave the action open, hinges open, and you can clean it out as normal. On the back of the action here, there's actually an adjuster so you can change the bolt speed. So if you are using very low velocity ammunition, you can soften it slightly to make sure it still reciprocates correctly. But this one's actually been set up for high velocity ammunition, although I didn't have any problem at all with ammunition anywhere between 1,000 and 1,200 feet per second using it. Put the rifle back together, just put the pin back through. It's not captive, so don't lose it. And there you go, ready to shoot again. Of course on the back end with it being an AR-15 type rifle, it's got a buffer tube on. There's a little bit of rattle in here but that's nothing to be expected from sort of generic AR-15 type equipment. And on the rear end, the recoil pad, it's soft rubber, grips in your shoulder and of course you don't really need much recoil absorption on a 2-2 room fire anyway. I've enjoyed shooting this rifle, the trigger is consistent, it's quite heavy, but you do get used to it and you can make a nice crisp firm pull on it to make sure the action is operating exactly as you need. The rear of the T-handle bolt here, it's easiest to operate with just one finger like that because there is a locking lever on it, but of course you'll see in the video, it works easily. The trigger is actually quite predictable and although heavy, you do learn to squeeze it in a controlled fashion. I do really like the open sights on it and I love the fact you can just flip down that to give you the larger aperture for faster target acquisition at closer distance or when you are pushing it out of range a little bit further click that back up go down to the smaller aperture and you have got noticeably better precision when aiming it's not quite as fast for target acquisition so you've got a good option there for different types of shooting environment elevation adjustment at the front is a little bit more complicated than the windage at the rear you just need to push that little detent down there and the pin rotates to give you those four different elevation positions the rifle is supplied with quite a comprehensive manual, gives you all the information about how to use it and how it differs from other AR-15 looking rifles. There are also a few tools with it and you get a spanner, you get a breech plug and you also get an Allen key for adjustments. The biggest difference between most AR-15 type 2.2 room fires is the amount of polymer or aluminium used in the receiver and throughout the rifle. I would say this one compared to say Smith & Wesson 15.22 does have more aluminium in it and it changes the handling dynamic slightly. Does it make the rifle any more accurate, any more consistent? 
I don't think it does and I enjoy using both rifles. I do like the way this one shoots and I have found it incredibly consistent and I like the fact the magazines have got those two buttons on the side and it makes them easy to load. But I would want spares because you do get to your ammunition quite quickly because it is of course a very fast fire rifle. One drawback between this and the 1522 is you can't manually control that bolt latch on it but I didn't actually in normal usage find a difference in that. Just be aware if you've got certain range firing procedures you might need to just adapt slightly to make sure you are locking the bolt back with that magazine although as said before the last round when the follower comes up and the action cycles the bolt automatically locks back drop the mag out and off you go again I don't think any semi-automatic 2 2 rimfire is as fundamentally accurate as a precision bolt rifle, but the gun has been fun to shoot and it's been reliable in operation. I haven't had misfeeds and it's also not accumulated dirt and debris in the action too badly. Of course, these will always suffer if you don't clean them on a regular basis because the bullets themselves fundamentally have waxy or oily lubricants and of course you get that sooty firing residue from them. So make sure you have a regular maintenance schedule with any kind of 2 2 like this. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching that review. Please like, subscribe, comment, click the notification bell and keep track of the regular uploads to make sure you know exactly what's going on on the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.